Hello everyone, welcome back to STEMI Conversations. STEMI Conversations is a podcast to discuss all careers in science, technology, engineering, and maths, STEM, and information technology, ICT. The goal of our podcast is to expose our audience to careers within STEM and ICT as they are integral fields in our world today. Today, I'll be your host, Kenita Roberts. Joined with me, I have Stephanie and mm -hmm. our guest speaker. Remember to contact us or connect with us on semi.conversations on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, and Anchor. Today, we have Mr. Javier Munan. He is an exploration manager at Touchstone Exploration in Trinidad and Tobago. He's an award-winning geophysicist, and he's a geo geology lecturer at the University of the West Indies, president-elect of AAPG, Latin America and Caribbean region. Welcome, Mr. Munan, to STEMI Conversations. How are you today? Um, I'll share my screen, right? Okay, no problem. I just need to give me permissions. Right. Yeah. So, um, so today I'm I'm gonna try to walk you through um, uh, my career so far in oil and gas as a young professional. Um, I've I've been in this field for just about fifteen or so years, and uh, yeah, um, I had early early days ex um, um, considering being a geologist, but not necessarily in, in the oil and gas sector. So I'll take you through um, some of the key points in, in my life that I think um, um, directed me towards this. And it's, an, it's a sector that basically uh, you will hear over and over, it's cyclic. All right, there are booms, there are busts in these kinds of um, jobs. Um, and the key thing uh, to navigate yourself through these fields is basically to understand how to ride those waves and how to, um, to capitalize on the upturns and um, and make sure that you survive the downturns. So it's a, it's a very challenging field, but very, uh, very re rewarding at the same time. Um, so why did I get into oil and gas? Well, actually I wanted to really be like a geologist. I wanted to be a paleontologist to be more specific. I was fascinated with um, shows like Jurassic Park and stuff. I wanted to go and look for dinosaur bones and that sort of thing. Um, and I grew up in an oil field. So I like, I knew about the oil field. I saw pumping jacks. I saw people drilling, but not so much was I interested in those kinds of activities. I more was interested in just like exploring, just being inquisitive. Um, my, my, my dad actually was a geography teacher at the time, and he would always take me out on field trips. And I always loved that. I just loved getting to know, um, you know, everywhere around me and always inquisitive about like what's going on around me and, and below me as well too. So the oil and gas, um, of course, must appreciate that it is actually part of Trinidad's um, economy, a, a large part actually. And so um, uh, the effect of the price of oil and gas has a direct impact on um, the economy of Trinidad and an indirect impact or direct impact on the livelihood of many of the citizens, right? Um, we've been in this sector for, yes, 100 years of production or so. Um, and, but most of, the, of those years, the oil price was actually quite low. Um, so you can see that, you know, as I started my career um, joining the university and stuff, um, oil price was actually quite low. And you would see that I would chart what's going to happen um, over the next couple of years as the price started to increase and dramatically decrease at the same time. So 
oil price has actually, from greater part of our um, lives, been relatively low. And only in, in the last um, 20 years or so, it actually really started to um, de uh, um, move away from that sort of trend. So I found that, um, that you know, um, I decided, well, I wanted to, to enroll in geology. I went to Mona, Jamaica to study. Um, and still, I, at that point in time, I was head, head fast that I wanted to be a paleontologist. That's, that's my go-to sort of thing. Um, on one of, the, one of the summer breaks, so to say, I think that was like July or so, um, after my first year, I luckily got into an internship program that Petrotrain offered. Um, and basically, I found myself with about 100 or so other students <clears throat> of all kinds of different fields, um, six of which were um, geoscience or geology related. And they, um, they basically enrolled us into this undergraduate program. Um, I was um, told to, to join the geology table at this conference room. And then that table was then asked to go um, to uh, meet a, a geology manager in Petrotrain, who then told me that there's a project for a single person at a particular um, office that Petrotrain um, hosted. Um, and then the rest of projects would basically be a sort of rotation through the different sites that Petrotrain runs in the, in the country. Um, I know it was going to be a single project. And so it's like, you know, you're sort of like jumping headfirst into this. I don't really have a passion for oil and gas at this point in time. And now I'm actually going to embark on doing a project by myself, right? But I thought, you know what, sometimes you just need to take the leap of faith. And just go for it and just see where it goes right and that moment that decision where i put up my hand at that point was the actual moment that kick-started my entire career right i went I, I put up my hand and then the manager told me there's a car waiting downstairs to take me to this particular office so i went and I got introduced to all of these really fantastic mentors who became great mentors to me they just taught me everything, right? And in those two months, I learned so much that I was just like, this is what I want to do. I just love this, right? Um, it, was, it was basically something that I then eventually built on to use as my undergraduate thesis in the end for my geology degree. And, um, and I thought it was fantastic. I, I, it was a very, nice department. There were folks who taught me structural geology and mapping, and they would just take me out in the fields and we would see wells being drilled and logs being run and wells and stuff. And it, I just totally embraced it. And I built lots of relationships there, right? It's, I realized, I mean, I didn't know at the time, but I realized that actually that actually helps quite a lot. People judge you in those interactions, right? and they judge your attitude to work. And that's key. That's actually more key than what sort of GPA you graduate with, right? People want the right attitude of workers in their workplace. So I thought, okay, well, you know, I finished my degree. Um, I'm going to apply for jobs and I'm going to get a job because I mean, I've got a degree now, right? I feel so, some sort of entitlement, right? <clears throat> Well, the wake up call is that you apply for jobs and there's no jobs sometimes, right? And I applied literally to probably every single company that there was in, in Trinidad at, at that time. And, um, and yeah, no, nobody was hiring because the oil price wasn't that great. It was actually on the way down a bit. And, um, and so I thought, okay, well, what do I do now? I just saw an ad in the newspaper for an operations manager, which clearly has nothing to do with what I'm qualified for, right? But I did some research on the company who, whose logo was in the newspaper. And then I realized, well, they actually 
our ge geology related, right? So I applied and I actually got a call and they told me, well, Mr. Moonan, you are clearly not qualified for this position, but we do have some openings for positions that we think you're qualified for. Maybe you can come for an interview. And that was it. About two weeks later, I found myself on a rig and I was learning um, mud logging, right? So mud logging was not actually what I thought I would like or get into, right? Um, I, so far, I've been exposed to like drilling and stuff from, from, the, from the, um, the internship at Petrotrin, but um, uh, Petrotrin's rigs were, were never um, uh, housed with mud logging units because those are um, you know, low cost development wells. Mud logging tends to be more on the more prevalent on the offshore wells more expensive wells, and also on exploration wells. Um, so I never really got a, um, a, a preview of what mud logging was like until I actually got onto the rig itself and, you know, sort of like dive head first, right, into this, um, into this new field. And, and I didn't real, really realize at the time that actually um, that experience that I was gonna get there was actually gonna be probably the most invaluable experience I've ever had, right? Um, I learned so much on all of those wells. They, the Tal Talisman Energy was a company that was drilling. They had four exploration wells and literally anything and everything that could have gone wrong went wrong, right? So you learn when things go wrong, right? Because when things don't go, you know, when things do go according to plan, you don't learn about how to deal with it. When, when they don't, right? And literally everything that could have gone wrong went wrong. So I learned so much. I remember after that, I then um, got an interview for um, a whole bunch of companies in, in one week, it was really coincidental. And um, one of those interviews, again, was with Petrotrin. And they asked me, I remember the manager asking me, well, what did you learn from your experience with Talisman? And I said, to sum it up, I learned what not to do, right? <laughs> um, because everything went wrong, right? Um, so I got this job offer with Petrotrin in the end. Um, it was for um, an exploration geologist. And that is, again, I liked the fact that I was working with a company that I can do my maps and I can put an X and say, this is where I want to drill. That's what I was aspiring to be. But this was actually an exploration role now. So it wasn't exactly what I wanted to do as well. Um, I was so accustomed to the development um, lifestyle whereby you know, you're, you're mapping and drilling within, uh, within a few months, right? It's a fast turnover. Um, time period. There's lots of activity. It keeps you busy. You're, by the time you're finished mapping, you're drilling probably four or five wells, right? Um, an exploration game, however, is a long-term game. It takes a lot of planning. It takes a lot of analysis. And so, um, yeah, I mean, my manager was then telling me, well, the next exploration well might be drilled in five years' time. And I'm like, five years like that's gonna be so long right like um you know i want i want to do something now you know you know um so it wasn't exactly what i wanted to, to do but i took on the challenge and stepped outside of my comfort zone because it's what i was accustomed to and just do something different right expand into that field who knows one day it might, might actually come in very very um very invaluable so I worked on that. I got a chance to also, through that, work with many multinationals um, who were partnering with Petrotrin. So that gave me more exposure to other companies and other companies' personnel and their experiences and um, their data sets and all kinds of things, right? And then realized that like, you know, building relationships outside of your own company or even your little circle is really key, right? So I joined a society called the Geological Society of Trinidad and Tobago, who 
um, basically I, I got a chance to um, plan events and field trips and stuff, which you might think is actually like, okay, what's the big deal of just doing that, right? But the thing is that when you plan events for professionals in a professional society, you actually get a chance to interact sometimes one-on-one -on -one with hundreds of professionals who are all related to you through the society, right? And sooner or later, they get accustomed to your name. They know you, right? They know what you do and they know, you know, the kind of attitude you have, the passion you have, the dedication you have. And they judge all of that from just your, the way you send emails to them or the way you interact with them on a field trip or the way you host them into, into some event that you're having. All of those things are, again, interactions. Interactions that go a long way in helping people to judge your character, right? Um, so I, I, I kept working um, um, with Petrotrin on that. And, and then a crash came in the oil price, a huge crash, right? We went from like 150 oil all the way back down, right? And as you expect, most projects got stalled, right? Um, of course, exploration projects would be the first projects to get stalled altogether, right? So no, no longer were we looking at a five-year timeline, we we're more looking at 10 years now. So at that point, I realized, well, since my projects are going to be stalled, maybe I should do something to, in, the, in this time to improve myself, right? I realized that, you know, in that timeline that I was working with them, that I realized that, you know, I've got weaknesses. I am not great in every single part of geology, right? There are many facets to that I'm not good at. And that's a key thing, learning and figuring out what you're not good at. And when admitting to yourself that you're not good at that, that's a key point, right? If you can do that, you can improve yourself because you then work on those things, right? So I found out my weaknesses. I said, I'm gonna work on that. I'm gonna improve myself through these courses or through interacting with people who are professions, professionals in those levels, right? So I signed up for structural geology because that's what I, I realized that I needed to improve on. I also like it, but I, I'm not great at it, right? So I needed to improve on it. And, it's, and so I, I worked on that. Um, I decided that for my master's thesis, so I, I, I signed up for the MSc Structural Geology at Leeds University. And I decided for my master's thesis that I would do, uh, I would apply what I've learned to a field back in Trinidad that I was actually mapping and stuff before. So could I take what I've learned take the same old data set and do something new with it and probably um, come up with something that no one's come up with before, right? And so I researched Pinal Barco as my thesis. And um, yeah, I, I, it, 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 was, it was quite rewarding. And so I found, you know, I, I look at, at doing my master's at that point in time, figuring out what, I need to improve me, what I think the country probably needs to improve itself, what Petrotrin probably needs to improve itself to then help you know, all of us basically remain ahead of the curve, right? So my, 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 my lecturer from the University of Leeds, he encouraged me to present my thesis at um, AAPG, the American Association of Petroleum Geologists. And when I did that, I actually got recognized for it. So like, lo and behold, I, I just did this project. Now it's actually been recognized and it's fantastic, right? And I started like doing, um, taking up more leadership roles with the AAPG and with the Geological Society of Trinidad and Tobago. Um, I started mentoring people because I found that when I teach, I learn better. Right, so you have to, to, to be able to know something, a subject matter, 
at a pretty detailed level to be able to break it down simple enough for anyone to understand, right? And so I, the more I lecture, the more actually I learn and I improve myself as well too, right? So I started, um, I started mentoring people and lecturing um, at the University of the West Indies, and I've actually started lecturing at the University of Trinidad and Tobago and, and also um, some courses with the University of Guyana and Anton de Com in Suriname. And yeah, um, so I, I found that that was, um, that was quite rewarding as well too, just to see you know, the wow moment for some students is great. Right, it inspires me. I know it's inspiring them, but I I love that. Right, um, yeah. I, I always do like I take part in career days because I realize you know with the crash in the oil price, a lot of parents were telling their kids don't go into engineering, don't go into anything um, petroleum related because um, you know a lot of people are being laid off from jobs and stuff. But you don't know the impact that that's making, right? These kids are now like 12, 13, 14 years old. They will actually graduate about 10 years from now, right? So 10 years from now, there's gonna be a demand for workers, right? In, in those fields. And, and so um, I think uh, that's somewhere that, um, that some, some more um, uh, awareness in schools and stuff need to, to be put forward that, you know, if, Simple things like that have a huge detrimental impact on, on company on countries um, later on. Um, I got offered then for a job with a British company, Centrica Energy, to explore a totally different basin, different data sets, different, um, you know, using my, my seismic capabilities and stuff, stuff like stuff that I could not have done before with the areas that I was working before. So I got a chance to like experiment with those, um, those tools that I learned. And I took on that role and we drilled some wells offshore Tobago, a nice gas wells and stuff. And, um, and then I got into like um, uh, supporting the APG and hosting what we call geoscience technology workshops. And those workshops, you basically have like a really key theme to it and you get like hundreds of professionals who are like the best of the best in that particular team to all converge in one place and discuss that subject matter so through that of course a lot of of, of linkages and uh, networking uh, i like this point um, you should appreciate your mentors right um, you listen to them, you build from their foundation. I know a lot of people like would be like, well, you know, those, those old people didn't know what they were talking about, right? But the truth is they knew what they, they knew and they did the best based on what data they had at that point in time or what they've been taught at that point in time, right? So you always build on those foundations, right? Um, and I appreciate that. Uh, there are lots, lots to learn from, from, from folks and you learn a lot. From just talking to them. I just love to talk to people. Talking to people, you you gain so much knowledge summarized. It's like if you were to go and read 10 technical papers, you're basically getting like all of that summarized to you in conversations, right? And you learn a lot from just like talking to, um, to people with experience. Career paths and never straight lines, right? So I, I was trying to find my way um, to, to being um, an exploration manager. And basically I'm, I'm exposing myself to different, um, different things along the way. And, um, and hopefully I get there. But I am at that point in time, I know, I know where I want to get to, but maybe it's not a straight road, right? It's, it's, gonna, it's gonna win and, and walk here and there. Um, so uh, there was another crash again in the oil price. And a lot of students and stuff were dismayed. I tried to do things to um, encourage them and keep them engaged, whereby like we would like visit like rigs or run tours to different places and basically try to show that, you know, you could learn a lot of stuff without actually having been in a company or even attending courses and stuff. 
Um, and when we actually visited a rig with a bunch of students and we got um, personal protective equipment donated and that sort of thing, lo and behold, that actually was the first rig visit to an active drilling rig that the AAPG ever did in its 100 year of history, right? And it was a simple thing like visiting a rig, why not, right? Um, and so sometimes you just need to, to ask. We just asked the rig company, could we visit? And they were like, yeah, if you got all the equipment and stuff, why not, right? So opportunities are everywhere. You would never know if you don't ask. Sometimes you just have to ask, right? Sum up that, that, um, that courage to just ask, right? Um, and yeah, with all of this happening, my life isn't all fine and dandy. I've, I got married, I bought a house, I had a baby, and my company was closing its doors in Trinidad. And all, while all of this is happening, I'm trying to keep everybody, um, keep, keep the other young professionals engaged, trying to show that there's hope, but is there hope for me too, right? <laughs> like, all, and all of this is going on, right? Um, but because I was lecturing um, on a part-time basis before, Luckily, the university recognized that and they asked me to come on full time with them. So I, I guess, you know, something that I thought was really just volunteership before actually turns out to be a, a, um, a whole change in career at that point in time, right? And, and an alternative um, um, uh, place to, to earn some income and stuff. So I started lecturing. Um, I'm getting a chance to do some consultancy research, look at things that I know the industry probably needs because I was in the industry before. So I know the challenges the folks in the industry had and what they're looking for, but no one in the industry has the time to actually work up those problems. They're like, you know, they've got deadlines, they've got drills to, to do. So luckily with academia, you do have some more time to work on those kinds of things. So, um, I, I worked on stuff like that and coordinated more things. And the key thing here is you could get rejected a hundred times, but all you need is just one job offer, right? And so to, um, so I, so like I said, I, I had begun consulting and lo and behold, um, I was then asked to consult for touch zone expiration who at that point in time started looking at the <clears throat> mid Miocene Herrera turbidites, which I had actually researched 10 years before in the University of Leeds as my MSc. And, um, and so they asked me to come on board and like, um, you know, help them with this exploration phase. <clears throat> and so we did, and we drilled and we so far luckily successful um, and Lo and behold, I'm full circle back to where I wanted to be um, with all of those inputs from 10 years ago helping, right? Um, and, and so that doesn't, um, I'm however not gonna be complacent and be like, okay, I'm an expression manager. I'm great, I've reached where I need to be. No, I'm still get, staying, staying involved with societies, the Society of Perfect Petroleum Engineers, Geological Society, the APG, I'm assisting disaster preparedness groups wherever I can. I love my country and I love my region and I support wherever I can because that's, that's, that's what I feel is my obligation that because I have been granted with great mentors and great experiences along the way, I think it's great to continue to inspire people because I think that, you know, I never dreamt that I would reach this point, like, you know, and I still consider myself kind of young, right, that I would reach this point at this point in my life. So I'm quite proud that, that I did that. And I think it's something that a lot of folks can, uh, can learn from. Um, and so, yeah, you don't always have to have a, a unique idea. I found that you don't have to actually have a unique idea. Sometimes you know, there's, there's great um, ideas being generated all over the place. And sometimes you just need to actually um, apply it, 
to your problem right here you know maybe it'll it'll work maybe it'll, it'll, it won't right so you never know and so yeah just to summarize um you know sometimes you just have to think what no one has taught or apply what no one has taught to a problem um right in front of you right so you don't have to necessarily um come up with something totally brand new of course that's great but sometimes um you know something pretty um simple is not being or common sensical is not being applied and just never been taught of so yeah um just you know always be an optimist and step outside of your comfort zone it takes you a long way and that's it thank you mr munan for your presentation this is actually a very timely um presentation very timely career path because as you know guyana um has oil and gas right now and so we would have a lot of persons who are aspiring to be geologists petroleum engineers everything within this field um this is actually a field i find um interesting i am doing environmental science um so I find this area interesting, but in terms of the engineering side, I would say I'm a little bit scared. I think it's a little bit hard, you know, to get to the engineering side. Though I know that if I do it, I can handle it if I put my mind to it. But um, I chose the environmental um, aspect of it. Um, I love the fact that your slides, um, while you were talking, you know, persons were able to look at, okay, the upbringing or the, I want to say bring the, looking for the right word the thing in the yellow mm -hmm. um the inspirational part you know mm -hmm. you can grab the from, yeah from each slide yeah some of those were actually like um things that you know either a mentor told me along the way that i found mm -hmm. you know lasted on, on had a lasting impression on me or like um you know i've, I've actually said some of these things to people you know because it, it you know it just made sense right like sometimes yeah um you you just need to you just need to try um i i had no idea that i would uh, uh like reach this point in my career uh at, at this age like typically an expression manager like when i was when i just started the industry expression manager is some guy with like you know, full gray hair and all kinds of <laughs> things right you know so like uh, on the verge of like retiring and stuff um so i'm great grateful for this opportunity right so um and i think it a lot has to do with how you um how you build that build your name in the in the industry um keep in touch with what's relevant keep researching and don't ever get too comfortable, right? Yeah. Okay, so the question that I had wanted to ask was that I noticed on your slide you had something with geophysics. So I know a bit of the physics part, like the, like what it entails, but how does how does geography ties into it and causes of the geo um, on the geophysics? If you can explain that for me. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Um, Okay, so so yeah, linking it back to geography, right? So I mean, geography is basically um, trying to understand the Earth as we see it today, right? Try to understand the distribution of features across the the Earth, um, even um, and even the land use features by you know what what how we and how we um, use the Earth and. The, the ways that we uh, we extract or utilize resources and stuff, right? So geography sort of deals with that sort of aspect, right? And so in geography, you would have learned about, you know, mountains and valleys and uh, forests and the use of uh, rivers and that sort of thing. What we do in geology is we are trying to understand the geography of the earth, but some years ago and I'm, when i'm talking years i'm talking millions of years ago what did this place look like um 200 million years ago for instance 
right? But was it geography of the area 200 million years ago? Where were the mountains? Where were the rivers, right? Where was the ocean? How deep was it, right? So, um, and we even look at uh, the life forms, what existed back then? What kinds of trees were there? What kinds of animals, right? Geophysics now is uh, taking basically uh, uh, physical tools with, that we use to understand um, the, the, the ground, the uh, ground surface, um, and trying to image below the ground surface to, um, to extract or to understand or help us understand the geology of what, um, what existed the geography of what existed then, right? So geophysics basically helps provide a picture into the past for geologists, right? Um, basically, uh, um, the typical, when you hear the term geophysics, it's sort of synonymous with seismic, right? You, because a lot of geophysicists tend to interpret seismic or they tend to acquire seismic, right? And seismic is the most basic uh, description of seismic is that it is the ultrasound of the earth, right? So you're basically sending sound waves down into the ground and trying to see what's below the ground, right? Trying to see the layers of rock below the ground. And those layers, each one of those layers can then be related back to periods in time millions of years ago, right? So those layers would have been the ground surface or the top of a mountain millions of years ago, right? Um, so, so the sound waves going into the ground is a physical part, that's the physicist's part, how a sound wave travels, right? So we understand sound travels um, in, in a wave and it travels a certain distance over a certain time. So that gives us a sort of velocity relationship, right? And the, as those sound waves go into the ground, they hit layers of rock. And if you send a sound wave into the ground, just like any wave going into the ground, it hits a layer and it rebounds, right? So when it rebounds, you get a reflection, right? Of that coming back up to surface. We record that and that gives us a picture of what's going on below the ground. So there's a bit of a mixture of um, a geophysicist basically utilizes physics to understand what's going on below the ground. The geologist would then take that picture of what's going on below the ground to figure out what the geography of the area used to be like millions of years ago. And as a geologist, you would look at the geography today and try to picture what, um, how similar or dissimilar places in the past may have been, right? So are there places today that the geography is the same to, um, to what it was like 100 million years ago or no, right? Um, okay, just to blow your mind a little bit. For instance, you know, the Bahamas, you picture, yeah. when you picture the Bahamas, you think of all these nice little islands, white sand beaches all around, lots of corals and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Well, once upon a time, a hundred million years ago, and the, the area between Trinidad, Guyana, and Suriname, that entire area there, used to look like the Bahamas. Okay. So we, we can study using the geophysics, figure out that this is what it used to look like and then relate it back to the Bahamas today and be like, well, this is what a carbonate area looks like. So I can study that area and apply it back to an area that used to be a carbonate area in the past. Well, that's pretty cool and interesting. Thank you so much for explaining that part. I think I'm going to do a more diving on that area. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty cool. I mean, you could see it before and after as to what it was um, in the past. Mm -hmm. All right. 
Kenny. So over back to you. <laughs> thank you, Steph. So thank you, Mr. Munan, for really explaining the explaining your career journey and also diving a little bit into um, what geophysics is about. I'm pretty sure our learners or our viewers um, would find it enlightening. Um, some of the things that really screamed out at me at your presentation was specifically the um, inspirational quote that I would have mentioned earlier. And I just want to reiterate some of them because it is something that has been reoccurring on our episodes throughout, you know, talking to different persons about their careers. Um, one of them being building relationships as they go a far way. And as we know that networking is very important when it comes to doing careers, um, taking a leap, leap of faith and trying new things. Most of the persons who we would have spoken to, they did not know where they were really heading to, but you know, they just, you know, hopped into it and eventually whatever they were meant to do was revealed to them. Um, experience is invalu invaluable and it can be applied anywhere and at any time. Um, we would have seen throughout our episodes that a lot of persons we spoke, they have so much experience in not just one aspect, but different aspects that they would have used to pull together to make it a career. And always challenge yourself um, and step out of your comfort zone. So those are some of that I liked, um, and I'm hoping to apply them as I uh, as I approach my career. I too do not know what I want to do. I have a general idea, but that doesn't mean that I will end up there. So thank you for being here with us today, Mr. Munan, and we do hope to connect with you in the future. Thank you for yeah, listening. Thanks. To, yes, thank you for listening to STEMI conversations and do have a great rest of your day. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity.